If you want to add video accessories such as monitors, LED lights, microphones, top handles, day camera, then you're going to need a cage. Now, the main purpose or the function of a camera cage really is to provide a range of mounting options for various camera accessories. Additionally, they also offer some degree of protection to your camera due to the fact that you now have a metallic outer shell around the body of your camera. In my opinion though, regardless of the manufacturer or the design, camera cages should include one main feature and that is to allow access to your camera's controls. So that's all the buttons, uh, access to input output ports and access to the battery. In today's video, I'll be comparing two different cages from two different manufacturers for the Canon R5C. This is the half cage from Small Rig, and this is the TA32 from Tilter. Links to both of these are in the description below. So I bought the Small Rig cage about four months ago when I picked up the R5C. And to be honest, it's worked so far until I recently came across an issue that I just couldn't live with. And as a result, I needed to find an alternative. So let's take a closer look. The small rig is a half cage design, and as you can see, it doesn't wrap around the entire camera body. So whilst it is inherently lighter, it comes at a cost of stability. Now this causes the cage to flex, which you know may or may not be a problem depending on how you're going to be using the setup. The tilter, on the other hand, is a full cage, and it wraps around the whole body of the camera, which adds extra stability, extra protection, and extra mounting points. I suppose I should mention at this point here that there is actually a full cage version from Small Rig as well. Now, at the top of the tilter, you have three quarter 20 threads, three cold true mounts, as well as a NATO slider situation. At the top of the Small Rig, there is one cold true mount and a few quarter 20 threaded inserts. On the left of the tilter are more quarter 20 threads, plus an RE rosette adapter, as well as another NATO slider. So there's a lot of options to choose from there. Now, these both come with a detachable cable clamp. The tilter clamp is very neat and minimal, but it requires an Allen key to attach it and to secure the clamp. On the other hand, the small rig cable clamp doesn't require any tools at all, and it's very practical. Um, that is, if you don't mind these big old knobs here. Down at the base, both of these comes with an Arca Swiss quick release plate built in, which is great but the tilter goes a step further by including a detachable Manfrotto plate as part of the package. So you get that in the box when you purchase this uh, cage. Both of these cages have scratch protection inbuilt by way of these rubber pads, and both are secured to the camera using a single screw and a locator pin. The small rig, however, additionally implements the use of an anti-twist mechanism via the shoulder strap access. Now, both cages allow for access to all of the camera controls, including the battery, which is super important. Now, even though we have a cold stream mount at the top right of the tilter, I can't see it being very functional with so many buttons and dials situated right underneath it. So you might not be able to access those if you had a, an accessory using that cold stream mount. Okay, now this might be a big deal if you're using a VND adapter especially if you're going to need to interchange the filters often. Well, none of these cages allow you to do that without removing the adapter from the camera anyway, which if you're using the supplied mount support on the tilter also means that you need an Allen key to loosen it off. However, if you don't use this adapter or your setup is different, you have an IRF lens, then really it's a non-issue when it comes to this. And now this brings me nicely onto the reason why I actually switched from the small rig to the tilter which is this lens mount support. And this helps to create a more secure connection and limits any shift in the image that can be caused when using a follow focus system. So there was so much flex between the cage and the camera when the focus motor was engaged, as you can see on the screen here. And that was when I decided that I had to find another solution. So in my opinion, for an extra 65 pounds, save yourself the hassle and just get the tilter. Or if you've seen or used any other alternatives for the R5C, please do drop the links in the comments below and do let me know which cage you are using with your R5C. I'd love to hear about it. And just one more thing, if you own the R6, the R5 or the R5C and you need a cage, I can send you this small rig one as it's now surplus to requirement. All you need to do is pay the postage, um, hit me up on the DM and we can arrange that. Make sure though you're subscribed, you're following me here and on IG 
send me a message and we can get it sorted. So if you found this video useful, then you already know the drill. Hit the subscribe button for more content like this. That is it for me for today, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Go to the channel to find out how you can uh, get one of these and I'll see you guys in the next one. Really? <laughs> okay, let's try that again.